No, I, th I think to me the loss of calm was business as usual. Every mission, uh, as you went around the backside of the moon, you had LOS and then AOS, and I didn't have any reason to figure we wouldn't be in back in the communication when we came out the other side. I spent a uh, good part of the time with Jack Schweigert primarily. Uh, Jim wasn't that interested. He had been to the moon and seen it. We shot a lot of pictures. We had two cameras out, and we were uh, shooting pictures like crazy, like tourists. We are about 70 hours from home, and uh, we think we have uh, uh, the situation in control. We've projected the uh, consumables, as I've described, and uh, we have a plan for carrying out the rest of the mission, but uh, uh, there is going to be no relaxation at all as far as that goes from now until splash. Our first maneuver was to get us back on free return. The second one was to get us home early. The nominal flight time back home was 155 hours if we had done nothing else. But because consumables were critical and the ground was calculating consumables and Fred was also doing the back of envelope type calculation, which he figured if we were lucky, we had about one hour spare uh, consumables left before we had landed. We had decided, uh, or the ground had decided to burn at, uh, at about two hours past the moon, at about 79 hours, a maneuver to shorten the time to get home again. Plus X, Raj. We have ignition, Raj. 13%. Ground confirms ignition. 40%. Raj, 40%. Let's get it 40. Houston copies. Stable control. Looks good now, fine. Raj. Attitude looks good 100%. at this point. FTP. Roger, FTP. Still stable. After that, the ground was very much concerned with power, and we were too. Command module just slowly kept going down in temperature until I think uh, just prior to re-entry, uh, it was down to about 38 degrees. And along with that, it was a, a sort of a chilling uh, coldness. The walls were perspiring, the windows were completely wet, and it, uh, it wasn't too healthy. I recall that we went in there to get some hot dogs one day, and it was like reaching into the freezer for the, for the food. One of the uh, potable water lines was frozen the morning of entry at that, on the last day. That's how cold it was in there. It was out active thermal control. Of course, as the, uh, as the temperature went down, uh, we became concerned about keeping warm, and uh, Fred and I broke out our lunar boots, which we had uh, stowed away in the uh, lunar module, and Jack looked at his wet feet a couple times. <laughs> but he had an extra set of underwear, so he put that on. We actually had a third little sleep restraint, which Fred uh, then put on and buttoned up and kept a little bit warm. The command module was very wet. The water separators weren't working, either in the limb, all the command module, there was water everywhere. On every, you, in the limb, there's no inner walls. So you can see water on all the connectors, the wire bundles, plumbing, every turn of glob of water. And the command module, we actually had to get towels out to wipe off the instrument panel to see the instruments. The carbon dioxide canister was filling up quite rapidly and uh, we had to figure out a way of using the canisters in the command module and place them in the lunar module systems. And the ground read us up a procedure in order to adapt some of the command module canisters uh, for use in the LEM. And uh, as they read this thing up, Jim and I constructed one of these things 
At this point in time, I think the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide was uh, reading about 15 millimeters. And we constructed two of these things and put them on line, and I think within an hour, the uh, partial pressure of CO2 was down to two tenths. So these were very effective devices. About the time that we had the lithium hydroxide canisters in place right on the line, my team came in from the rest period. And the uh, trajectory team came up, Jerry Bostic was running that, basically said, I don't know what's going on, but our trajectory shallowing out. We had to figure out how to perform maneuver without a computer display system. And this was one procedure that they developed, I believe, for Apollo 8. The ground, after some tracking, realized that we were not on a trajectory that would get us safely back home and that we'd have to uh, make another maneuver. We're making the burn and uh, about, uh, I'll give you a hack here, it's uh, two minutes to go. By this time, the, uh, the crew stations became uh, a lot different. There are three people in the lunar module now, usually built for two. Uh, this last maneuver was gonna be unique because we did not have the platform powered up, so we didn't have a normal method of determining the attitude of the spacecraft in order to perform the burn. Right here, two minutes, we got it. On Apollo 8, uh, some time ago, we were concerned with perhaps losing a platform on the return voyage home, and since no one had ever made a lunar trip before, we were looking at sort of way out ways of determining how we could make these corrections home. And uh, some of our people here at MSC had come up with an idea about using the terminator of the Earth to orient the spacecraft and then the sun position to get orientation and pitch. And with that knowledge, we could then make uh, corrections to, to correct our angle of entry into the atmosphere. And uh, mark it, one minute. And as, as you know, I think that the, en the angle of entry into the atmosphere is a, is a very small angle, only about two degrees. And so it has to be controlled very closely and that's what the main tracking is for. So at 105 hours, they gave us instructions to uh, relight the descent engine uh, to orient the spacecraft in this manner and uh, give this particular procedure a try. And when they read up the procedure to us, I just couldn't believe it because even on Apollo 8, I thought I'd never in all the world have to use something way out as this. Engine arm to descent. And because it was a manual burn, we had a three-man operation. Jack would uh, take care of the time. He'd tell us when to light off the engine, when to stop it. Fred handled the pitch maneuver, I handled the roll, roll maneuver, and I pushed the buttons to start and stop the engines. Ignition. Thrust looks good. Can shut down. Okay, looks good. Nice work. Let's hope it was. Everything got stacked up to the end. We, we had a, a dead mothership. Another big challenge for the ground uh, was to build the procedure in about three and a half days, how to power it up. We had no, no procedure to power it up. It had never intended to be ever shut down. And that was a pretty monumental task for a lot of people on the ground. We run uh, these simulators both here and at the Cape and at the contractors that, uh, continuously ever since uh, last night. We've tried to simulate virtually everything that we've had the crew to do that, uh, that is non-normal that they've done. And uh, we've proven most everything that we've been able to, uh, to run on the simulator prior to passing it up to them. There may be some details we haven't done, but at least we've checked the feasibility of everything we've done, and we'll continue to do that.